Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm really happy to be with you today. Here we are, second day of this week. And I'm talking about a fellow named Moses. Now, yesterday we talked about how, how he was saved from the Pharaoh's punishment and became a, a prince of Egypt. Today we're going to move forward a little bit. And he's already left Egypt. And beginning in chapter 3 with verse 4, we read these words. Well, let's start with, with parts of 3. The Lord appeared to Moses in the middle of a bush. And Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning? I must go and see. And when Moses, when the Lord saw Moses come take a closer look, he spoke to him from the bush and he said, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am, Lord. And the Lord says, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Egypt. Isaac, the God of Jacob. And when Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. And then verse 7 talks about how, and further on, how God says, I've seen the punishment. I know what's happened down there. And I haven't been uh, aloof to it. Then we get to then you get to verse 9, and it says, look, the Lord is saying, look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Israel. But Moses protested, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead Israel out of Egypt? And God answered, I will be with you. This story has amazed me ever since I was a little kid, even before I became a Christian. This notion of Moses seeing a bush that wasn't burned and goes to see it and in the process finds God. You know, we can find God in some of the strangest places and circumstances. I, I don't know what you think of when you think of God. I try to think not much, really, because he can be and do whatever he wants. I don't have this image of God that's special or you see it depicted in, in pictures or paintings or stained glass windows. I, I never thought to do that. But here's Moses standing in front of God himself. There's a couple of interesting things in here I want to point out. The first one is that God says to Moses, take off your sandals, for you're standing on holy ground. Now, most of us don't know the, the background of that phrase, take off your sandals. See, in Moses' day and Jesus' day and many years after that, people walked everywhere. And their feet got dirty and their sandals got really dirty. And when you went into someone's house, the first thing you would do is wash off your feet, clean them up. In this case, God is saying to Moses, I want you to sit down and stay a while and listen. And this phrase, take off your sandals, is probably the closest phrase we have in all of the Old Testament about how personal 
God wants his relationship with you to be. And so Moses does that. And, and the Lord reminds him of where he's been and whatnot. And then we get to the second issue here that's so profound. God says, I'm aware of what's happened. You know, sometimes we think God doesn't see. Sometimes we think God doesn't notice. I don't know why we think that. I guess we just don't think about him often enough. And we sort of feel like, hey, God, what are you doing? Why is this happening? I mean, come on, give me a break, will you? But he sees it all. And he always has a solution. Now, it's not the solution necessarily that you and I want to have. Moses didn't like God's solution here. What was his solution? Well, it's really pretty simple. He says, I am sending you to Pharaoh to lead my people out of Israel. You would think Moses might say, wow, God, that's, that's terrific. What does he say? Who am I to do this task? Too many people. First response to God's leading is, I can't do that. Or, I don't know how to do that. Or, surely somebody's better than I am. Well, you know, if somebody were better than you, God would have called that someone else. Uh, recently, uh, we got a dog for Faith. She needs it for her eyes to help be a companion. And we found this dog that is three months old. And Faith said, I wonder what's wrong with the dog that nobody bought him when he was smaller. I said, well, Faith, there's another way to look at this, you know. She said, what's that? I said, maybe God didn't let anybody buy that dog because it's supposed to be for you. I don't think she thought that God considers her so special that he would have the right dog ready when we go to look to help her with her eyesight loss. But I believe he does. And I believe he did. And I believe that God calls you and I to do things for him. Most of the time, we think we can't do it but we can. He wouldn't call you if you really couldn't do it. If you didn't have the abilities and this special piece, Moses says, I can't do this. Well, God knows Moses better than Moses knows Moses. But he also says this extra little piece, and he says it to you and to me. I will be with you. Wherever you go, God will be with you. That's his words, not mine. I just read them. He said them. Will you think about that? If there's something we can do to help out in the next little bit, let us know. We'll do whatever we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. Thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with some more thoughts about this guy called Moses. I'll talk to you later. God bless you.